Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to Justin's house. In this video, we're continuing with Platform Analytics Workspace and now we finally get to build the dashboard and you're gonna love how easy this is, how intuitive it is, what I've got up behind me. I wanted to make sure you saw it again. It's in my first video, but this is what I'm aiming for. We may end up somewhere else, but basically I want at the very top, I want a nice pretty title on my dashboard. I want those scores that I created in one of my, I think it was my second video. And then I want a list view of some stuff that's important to me when I'm looking at my dashboard. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. I'm over here in the uh, platform analytics workspace. Please, please go watch those videos about how I created these data visualizations. Um, I spent quite a bit of time making sure that we did some different ones so you guys can see them. So we're going to create my dashboard and we're going to create a bonus dashboard so you can see what that looks like. So let's go to dashboards. I'm using this tab right over here. I'm still within the platform analytics workspace and I'm just going to click create new dashboard and that's going to get us started. I'm going to do the recommended for most users, right? I'm going to treat you guys like your most users, I'm most users, and we're just going to call this first one Tokyo Features Dashboard. And uh, I'll just copy that into my description. I don't need anything special in there. This is in my PDI. Not a big deal if someone doesn't like the description. I'm not going to be sharing this with anybody. But now that I've created those data visualizations, I'm going to be able to quickly add those to my dashboard canvas. I'm going to be able to put other content on there. I'm going to be able to re resize it the way I want it to look. And it's going to be so easy. So a couple of things I want to point out before I start is one that I've got a title for my dashboard up here. I can use the pencil and edit that title. I can have multiple tabs on my dashboard. And so you know what? That might be what we do instead of making another dashboard. I might make another tab. I'm going to use this add new element to start putting some stuff on my dashboard. And I'll point out when I do this, notice that I have a couple of different options when I add a new element. I can choose something from the library. I can choose a data visualization, a filter, a heading, an image, a list, or some rich text. Try to do that on the previous dashboards in ServiceNow. You couldn't do it. You were kind of, or if you did, you maybe put something on there and it would kind of look like the way you want it. So let's do a heading. I'm going to add a heading here. That's nice. ServiceNow's logo there. I'm going to stretch this all the way across the top there. And I'm going to click on it and use these configuration uh, uh, handles. We'll call it a handle. I'm going to use this configuration handle to open the configuration panel over there. I'm going to get rid of ServiceNow's text and I'm going to type in Tokyo Features Dashboard, right? Real original there, Justin. And we'll leave it at level one, but notice I could change the size of that font if I wanted to. Um, actually, don't see it changing, um, but uh, we'll leave that at level one. And I think that's fine for me. Uh, for that one. So I'm going to do something I do in every application that I use. I'm going to save often. So you're going to see me do that. You get a nice little visual indicator there across the top when you save. And now notice I can come in here and edit the size of this box. I can make it smaller. I can make it bigger. And I've got that nice snappy grid in the background to make sure it looks and feels like how I want. So let's just tighten that up there. Now I got it. We'll exit editing mode and save the changes. And you can see Wow, that looks really nice. Just that by itself, it looks beautiful. But we'll go ahead and add some elements now. I'm going to go to my library, and I want to grab my scores that I created. So look at this. I love this. I can check the boxes of all the ones that I want and add them to my board really quickly. So I had my features. I had, let's see, features needing review. I had, um, hey, that's the only two I see. I've got to go to the next page. Let's change this to 20. So we'll open up a couple extra um, columns or a couple extra rows there. There we go. There's my release note pages. I'm looking for one more sitemap parts. That's what I wanted. So I'll click the add on all of those, get rid of the green and go back to my wireframe and see I had parts, pages, features, features. So let's do that. Let's put that on there. Parts was over here. We're just going to drag it over parts. It was parts, pages, features, and features. So this one needs to be all the way over here. Uh, features needing review. This will be all the features that I want on my dashboard. And then my release note pages needs to be somewhere over here. And now I'm just going to start making these a little bit bigger so they fill up the entire screen. I think that was three that I did there. You can see how easy this is to do. Um, let's go a little bit wider there. I can actually just match that by putting it under here. And uh, now you're behind my head. Let's move my head out of the way. Yeah, that's the same size. So let's drag that there. That's about where I want it. Let's try that one over here. Nope, we don't want to do that. I'll just put it right here and get them to match the size. 
right there. Okay, almost done. So easy to drag and drop and have something that looks nice and professional. So now I'm gonna tighten all that back up. I won't bore you with making this perfect. You can tinker on your own time with making this look super, super awesome and much better than Justin's. Oh my gosh, I got lucky. Can you believe that? It lined up perfectly. I couldn't have done that twice if I tried. I'm gonna make these a little smaller so that I have some real estate underneath. And the last two components that I wanted, I actually want a different one too now because I created it in my other video, um, are basically those list views. So I'm gonna add a new element and grab those lists and I'm gonna put that on there. I'm just gonna widen that up to fill up that entire side. I'm gonna add another element here. Let's get my head out of the way so you can see me actually click on the list, add that there, widen it up, and we're good. So I've got that. So if we look at my chart there, it was supposed to be a list of video candidates and a list of published product features. So I'm gonna just click on this and hit the configuration. That's gonna open it up. And what we're waiting for is its configuration to allow me to change that table. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna change the table, and then I'm gonna edit the two filters. There's a fixed filter of what's gonna present on there, and then there's the default filter of what someone can come in and actually change the filter. I'm gonna set them both to be the way I wanted. So let's change um, the table here to Tokyo Features. So I've got Tokyo Features, and I wanted to know, uh, that's not the actual table name, it has an X in there, Tokyo Feature, and uh, I wanted to see over here the ones that I flagged as video candidates. So I'm gonna grab the field for video candidate, and I'm gonna say is true. So I'll apply that there, and now I see just the ones that I flagged as video candidates. Uh, that's interesting, I didn't know I thought that was a uh, a filter that I wanted, or the the spokes is what I wanted. So let's make sure, though, this is set to active. So let's do video candidate is true on both of those. And now that looks more appropriate. So move my head out of the way and you can see um, I'm early on in my process here. I only have two uh, actual candidates. One is list grouping enhancements. I've already published a video on that. And two is the one I'm working through right now on the platform analytics workspace. So I've got that looking how I want. I'll just point out again that I updated two filters to make that work the way I wanted. Now we'll change this one. And this one is gonna be, and now I gotta remind myself, the published ones. So the stuff that has a YouTube URL in it. So again, I'm gonna wait for this table uh, field here to become active. You may not be able to see it. I'll zoom in and post it. Well, it's gone. There's a little like twisty thing sitting there winding up um, like to show you that it's getting ready to show you the table. So I'll search for Tokyo again. I need the same table. It's gonna be the feature table. And then I'm gonna edit the filter just like before. And But in this time, I'm gonna look for uh, the YouTube URL um, is, and I'm gonna say is not empty. So it has a URL in there. So I'll apply that there. I gotta do it one more time. Uh, for that one, we'll do YouTube, and there may be a better way to do this. This is the way I found to make it work, to show up the way I wanted, is not empty, apply, and now I'm done. I've got my dashboard, everybody, look at that, thunder applause. I've got a nice header at the top, I've got some scores running along just below that header, and then I've got two helpful lists for me, for Justin, to look at, um, oh, I just see, see something, I need to change the title on those, so let's, let's change that real quick. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna click configuration and I wanna change the title. This is gonna be video candidates. So this is the stuff that I think I might, that you might be interested in or that I may want to explore more and do something with. And this is gonna be published videos. And there we go. We will save and then I'm gonna exit and we should see, look at that dashboard, everybody. And it's fully interactive, so if I wanted to dive in and take a look at the platform analytics workspace record, it's my feature record, and do something, maybe I wanna add a URL to YouTube or WordPress or God knows what other social media place I'm gonna put something for or put something in next time, it's gonna open up the form and allow me to edit those fields. And remember, this is a custom app, but this is a scoped application that I came in and I created all these. So there's my description, there's my YouTube link, LinkedIn post, WordPress post, all that good stuff. So that's cool. We're gonna end this with one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this dashboard and I'm gonna give you a bonus. We're gonna change the title here and we're gonna say other data visualizations because I had a whole video where I made some other ones and I want you to see what that looks like on the dashboard. So now I'm in that tab. It looks like I can scroll down. Now this is interesting. It looks like I can add a heading to even 
to, is it this part? Yeah, above the tabs. Wait, let's save and see what that looks like. I'm discovering this live right now. I didn't know I could do this. I'm going to save, exit editing mode. Wow, that's pretty cool. So that's my first tab that I made, the Tokyo features. This is the other data visualizations. My mind's a little bit blown at the second. Look at this flexibility and this way to work. I'm going to leave service now stuff in there, and I'm going to change this name of tab to uh, Tokyo Features. And I'm going to get rid of this, and we will edit this heading. Uh, configure that. I'm going to change that to Tokyo Features to match. And then I've lied. I'm going to change this one up top. Uh, whoa, what happened there? The heading changed to Tokyo Features. That's interesting. I did not mean to do that. Or did I mean to do that? Yes, I did mean to do that. So that looks good. So I got Tokyo Features, then I got my Tokyo Features dashboard. Um, that is not quite what I wanted, but we will go with that. I'm going to go to another tab, and let's add some of that other stuff that I had. So I'm going to move my head out of the way. We're going to go to the library, and I did a calendar. I did some vulnerable items. I did the national vulnerabilities. Um, let's go ahead and expand this to have a little bit more options here. Lots going on. One more thing to show you, and that is you don't have to do this in the way that I showed you. So if I click on this particular report, I can configure it right here in the dashboard. So I don't have to go like I did and create that, go to the data visualization section. I'm going to move my head. Uh, so I can come in here and say, you know what, I really want a header on this particular report. And so we'll just say um, area graph of, of VIs. I think it was VI percentage target, you know, percentage target or something like that. So we'll just leave it like that. And I will click off of there, hit save. And look at that. I got to, uh, you made some changes, save it for only change. I'm going to save it back to the library. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I just discovered a feature. This is neat. So they're giving me the chance. This is actually, my mind's blown a little bit. So they're giving me the chance to save the changes for a graphic on my dashboard only to this dashboard or save it back to the entire library. Sorry, I'm getting excited here. Save it back to the entire library so that everybody sees your changes or only those on this dashboard that sees their change. Wow, I can't believe it. I wasn't expecting a couple of those features that I showed you. I discovered them with you. That is building a dashboard in Platform Analytics Workspace. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in doing reporting and dashboarding in ServiceNow's next experience in the Platform Analytics Workspace. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning. <laughs>